They come to you from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. Boston College off to its best start since the Matt Ryan days. The Eagles in the top 25 for the first time in a decade, while Purdue searches for its first win of the season. Good afternoon, Anish Roth alongside Ahmad Brooks. I think we can all safely say Clemson is the team to beat oh, yeah. in the ACC. Boston College, a popular preseason dark horse, 3-0 to start the season. What's BC's case as the number one contender to Clemson? Well, I think they've got a serious case when you look at the combination of offense and defense we're seeing out of Boston College. It's the best we've seen in years. You look at the defensive side of the ball, 11 sacks, which ranks them sixth in FBS, six interceptions on the year, which ranks them seventh in the FBS. They've got NFL talent on that side of the ball. But the big surprise for me has been the offensive production, averaging 40 points a game behind this guy's shoulders after scoring only 40 points three times last season. Anthony Brown has drastically improved his game, becoming one of the best play action and deep ball passers in the country. Boston College is a real deal, and today they're looking to prove that once again. Head coach Steve Adazio told us yesterday that this is a special group. The expectations are pretty high up in Chestnut Hill, and BC has a chance to have one of its best seasons in a long time. Purdue won the toss. They deferred. BC will receive. It's the first day of fall. It's homecoming here in West Lafayette. Spencer Evans will kick it off for Purdue. Michael Walker for BC. And Walker to the 32 as we say hello to Mark Morgan. Anish, thank you very much. This is the fourth straight home game for Purdue to start the regular season. The Boilermakers have lost all three by a total of only eight points. And head coach Jeff Brom told us that his team's margin for error is very slim. And today, against this ranked Boston College team, his club needs to play smart, error-free football. Penalties, mistakes have been a big part of Purdue's 0-3 start. On first down, the give is to A.J. Dillon, and he is wrapped up after a pickup of about three by Kenneth Major, who's getting the start at cornerback. And Dillon, one of the best running backs in the country. And as you mentioned in the open, Amat, Anthony Brown's play has given defenses caution. You want to load the box against Dillon. Brown can beat you with his arm over the top. But to start things out, it's Dillon on back-to-back -back carries. Yeah, and that's been the difference with Boston College that you alluded to is in the past, they've had good running backs, but the passing element is where they struggle. But now, even in these types of situations, Anthony Brown's athleticism and passing abilities make them a team that is fearful in these types of situations. Brown coming off the best game of his career on third down. Incomplete. It was tipped, intended for the tight end to Tommy Sweeney. And three and out goes Boston College. That's a great start for the Boilermakers. You see it here. They had the open space. The defensive line, linemen there giving great effort. As Lorenzo Neal sticks up his paw and knocks down that ball on third down and forcing the punt from the Eagles. Grant Carlson to punt the dangerous Rondell Moore back deep. And Moore makes the fair catch. A flag is down. Ball came out, recovered by Boston College, but this could be kick catch interference. You have to allow the return man room to catch the football. And they've got to be able to contain this young man. The coverage here just a tad bit eager for one of the best returners in the country. He's electric with the ball in his hand. Kick catch and interference. Boston College on the kickers. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced in the spot of the foul. First down. And while that's a penalty, it's another special teams miscue. And if you want to find an area to nitpick Boston College, special teams, they missed an extra point last week. 
They muffed a punt. Their punter had another ball go through his hands, which resulted directly in a Wake Forest touchdown. Special teams has been a little problematic. So Purdue will begin at its own 38-yard line. David Blau coming off a career game. The quarterback for the Boilermakers did not begin the season as the starter, but Jeff Brom told us he's the guy moving forward after a 572-yard performance last week. Play action. Blau under pressure. Buying time and then blown up. Tanner Carapa, the nose tackle. This is great protection early on. Now I watch the running back here and just come pick up Connor, one of the tough, toughest players on this football team. And Blau looking for a place to throw the football, but great containment there as the Eagles come up with the sack. A run here on second down. A couple of nice moves by DJ Knox. And he's to the 35. It sets up third and long. As so much attention, Ahmad, given to Boston College's defensive end is Wyatt Ray and Zach Allen. But go figure, it's one of the tackles inside. Carafa getting the quarterback on that first play. Empty backfield here. Purdue 45% on the young season on third downs. A four-man twist by BC. Blau over the middle. Intended for his tight end, Cole Herdman. He makes the catch. And there's a flag down at the end of the play. Looks like it'll be pass interference on the defense, but what a dart here from pass Blau. Defense, number 13. Penalties decline. He's over the play. It's a first down. That ball was thrown with pinpoint accuracy as Connor Strahan, who was actually in coverage, called for the pass interference. And man, that ball was put in the prime location, and the, the tight end goes up and high points the football for a big third down completion. Now with the BC 40. Wow, last week set the Purdue school record for passing yards, second highest total by a Big Ten quarterback. Blau again to the air, hit by Allen, throws it into coverage, nearly intercepted, broken up by Brandon Sebastian. Hamp Cheevers was there as well. Intended target was Terry Wright. You know, watch this hit from the All-American, Zach Allen, number two. <laughs> he just completely upends Blau, did not buy the fake, and boy, did he take a shot. And then if you're here in the secondary, you've got to make this play well covered on the back end. But you'd like to see them come down with the interception as Brandon Sebastian had the best shot to haul it in. Here is Knox. He's been their leading rusher through three games, and he's able to pick up three and a half. Knox came in averaging a Big Ten best 7.2 yards per carry. Yeah, and, and for the Purdue offense, they've got to start fast and finish, and they've, they've done that. And if you're Boston College, they've got to dominate on third down. You see the big third down completion for the Boilermakers already. They can't let that happen if, if they look to stop this offense. Empty again here on third down. Wow, complete near side, and there is the electric freshman, Rondell Moore. And he's able to move the chains for Purdue. So Moore, who came in leading the conference in catches, picks up another third down conversion. Yeah, he's special. And this kid here has so much wiggle. And that's the matchup they're looking for right now. If you're Boston College, you've got to do something else. Connor Strahan is an excellent linebacker. But to ask him to cover Moore is asking for something that I don't think he can do all game long. Wow. Finding Isaac Zico. And Zico takes it inside the 20. Another first down. Zico coming off a 100 yard receiving game. One of three Boilermakers over the century mark in the loss to Missouri last week. Good start here for Purdue, but this is an area they've got to be better. 14 red zone possessions on the season, only six touchdowns.
Jared Sparks on the jet sweep. And Sparks takes it down to the 10 yard line, close to a first down. And that loss to Mizzou, it was Sparks who had a touchdown that would have put Purdue ahead, but it was overturned. And that ended up deciding the game. Purdue had to settle for a field goal. Missouri got the ball back, marched down the field, and kicked the field goal as time expired. On second and short, the give is to Knox. And able to move the chains to set up a first and goal for Purdue. And I really like the rhythm right now that this offense is in. They're mixing it up, you know. They're hitting them with outside runs, jet sweeps. They're going over the middle of the field. They're passing outside, really forcing this defense to, the four, to, to defend the length and the width of the field. DJ Knox now split wide. He's at the bottom of your screen. In motion. A little pop pass. Not much for Rondell Moore, upended by Tajamir Torres, the senior from Amherst, Massachusetts. Yeah, and in talking to the defensive coordinator for Boston College, Jim Reed, he said with all the misdirection and the movement they do in the backfield, you've really had to have disciplined eyes and, and have studied film because they give you various looks. This is a multiple offense that the Boilermakers run, and that time well defended by Boston College. Give us to Knox. Lost the football. Was he down first? They say he was down. It'll bring up a third and goal. Tried to extend while that knee was down. And Purdue will hang on to the football. Now you can see that left knee hit the ground first before this ball is jarred loose by the ground, reaching for that extra yardage. Makers. Knox on third down. Powers in for a Purdue touchdown. What an excellent cut. And you get penetration on the defensive line for Boston College. And it was that sudden acceleration and cutting ability there of Knox that allowed him to squeeze in that hole, get up field, great job of getting his pads forward and punching one in the end zone. PAT by Evans is good to cap a 12-play, 62-yard drive, a couple of big third-down conversions, and D.J. Knox with his third rushing touchdown of the season, giving Purdue the early lead on homecoming day here in West Lafayette. The world's largest drum, a great relic here for Purdue, was the brainchild of Purdue alum, band director, and electrical engineering teacher, Paul Spots Emmerich, wanted to create the biggest drum in the world for the All-American Marching Band. I like it, but how about that? Now, I like that even more. Those guys are excited, indeed. <laughs> Walker, speeding across the 20, has the 30. Midfield into Purdue territory for a 58-yard return. A.J. Dillon gets the call on first down. And watch for that play from Boston College today. They want to get Dillon to the edge for one reason. They want to see if the other team's cornerbacks can tackle him. 
Yeah, and that'll be a tough task for sure. And uh, for Boston College, keep feeding that animal. And if you're Purdue, limit the explosive plays, particularly in the play action pass game. Dylan tripped up by Derek Barnes, who had a career high 13 tackles last week. And that is not easy to do. You know, Dylan is a thickly built individual, lower base, power base, which allows him to run through those types of tackles. Just a great effort there, wrapping up from Derek Barnes, forcing them in the third and medium situation. This may be four down territory for BC. Brown, plenty of time. Threads the needle and completes to Kobe White for a first down. A part of the problem defensively for Purdue, we saw it there, no pass rush. Yeah, but this is also the reason why Anthony Brown has taken the next level with his passing ability. He stands tall in the pocket, and this is a very small passing window in each. They only had a four-man rush, but watch where he puts this thing in between two defenders for the first down. On the jet sweep, it's Jeff Smith. Speedy wide receiver who was a former quarterback, and he picks up six. Smith had a big game last week against Wake Forest. Six catches, 145 yards, a couple of TDs. Dillon now on second down. Muscles his way for a first down. Six foot, 245 pounds, and a cold fusion of finesse and force. Yes, he is. <laughs> I like the description there and couldn't be more accurate. On play action. Cole Rob Idrizi dropped in the backfield, a loss of a yard by Marcus Bailey, the best player on this Purdue defense. Great recognition. He really squeezed down that space there and, and got up on that tight end rather quickly, which led to a tackle for loss, and that's extremely hard coming from that depth of the field to make that play. Dylan. No gain. So far, Wake Forest, I'm sorry, Purdue has done a pretty good job on A.J. Dillon. Yeah, Nick Holt said, we've got one job on, on Saturday, and that'll be to stuff the run. Now, that's a harder task than ask, but when you play with this type of gap integrity, and a look, they have jammed numbers in the box. That particular time there, you had eight guys in the box. They know that A.J. Dillon is the greatest weapon on this team, and now you put the ball back into the hands of your redshirt sophomore quarterback, looking for him to complete and connect on a consecutive third down. On third down, Brown to the air. End zone, touchdown, Tommy Sweeney, the tight end. Yeah, it, it seemed obvious to me, and I, I think when you study the Boilermakers on film, they are looking for answers at the safety position, and you heard me right before this play, look for something in the middle of the field, get Anthony Brown involved. This is where this kid's game has really taken off. His accuracy, his ability to look off safeties, find those windows, and then jam a ball in there. And the tight ends for Boston College are now deep. They can go four and five deep with you and under this offense. Um, that really helps them and benefits them in the long run. And the PAT by John Tessitore is good. Tommy Sweeney had only one other offer coming out of high school, FCS Delaware. He's now one of the top tight end prospects in the country. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. Anish Shroff, Ahmad Brooks, Mark Morgan with you. 7-7, Purdue and Boston College all tied up. Steve Adazio has been no better than 7-6 as BC's head coach. He's done that four times in five seasons, but boy, you get the feeling uh, this team has a chance to truly be special. I know they've got Clemson in their division, but with the defense, which has always been strong, to go along with A.J. Dillon in a competent passing game. Ceiling's higher for B.C. than it's been in a long time. As Rondell Moore takes it out to the 21. Wow on first down. Finds his tight end, Bryson Hopkins. They've got two good-looking tight ends in Herdman and Hopkins. Yeah, and that time there, he got that in right over the head of Max Richardson. Quarter number one comes to an end. Purdue scored on its opening drive. Boston College with a touchdown to the tight end, Tommy Sweeney. 
tied at seven. In West Lafayette. Samad, we were talking in the break. Purdue's defense looks a lot better. They do. And one of the concerns heading in uh, for the defensive coordinator, Nick Holt, was the tackling and the missed assignments. Last week versus Wake, poor communication in the back end. They let a guy run wide open and free, and they weren't able to tackle in space when they needed it. And so this week, it's been completely different. Not only are they tackling one of the best running backs in the nation in the open field with effectiveness, and they're really getting after it. I mean, they set the tone with the first three and out when Boston College came out, and they've continued to play well. David Blau to the air. Underneath, Rondell Moore bounces off the tackler, and there he goes! Moore will take it all the way! You are watching a burgeoning star in college football in Rondell Moore. This was big time. And one of the things when the coaching staff describes his talent, and let's just watch him make sure his knee is not down here. No, he kept it up. But the ability to be able to take the hit from Will Harris, and I'm assuming here, there. And let's face it, the highlight from that young man, that play may be on Sports Center, and you, you saw the backside trying to take an angle to the pie line. He completely destroyed that with his top end speed. Rondell Moore is a superstar in the making. PAT hits the upright, no good. And Purdue has to settle for six. Rondell Moore played his last two years of high school at Trinity High in Louisville, where his head coach, Jeff Brom, played. Purdue's top recruit has given the Boilers Another chance for Michael Walker, who's had a big day in the return game. Walker across the 40, and another big return by Walker. That's 41 yards. Deeks have a pretty good true freshman quarterback in Sam Hartman. A.J. Dillon, the sophomore from New London, Connecticut, out of bounds. Pushed out by Marcus Bailey. Dillon, the ACC preseason player of the year. Steve Adazio told us yesterday, he got a call last week from Earl Campbell, the wow. Tyler Rose, who wanted to tell Adazio that he watches Dylan, and the great Earl Campbell sees himself. <laughs> oh, that power, though. This, this young man has the might of 10 men. Anthony Brown thrown to the ground. The safety blitz, it's Thieneman. And boy, this Purdue defense looks completely different than it did a week ago. I mean, they are ferocious. They're attacking the football. And Thieneman coming off of the left side. You'll see him here on the left of your screen. Watch him here. He just squeezes there, goes unblocked. Brown tried to squeeze back up in the pocket, but a great job there of finishing the play. The captain, the former walk-on, making a play. Three-man rush, Brown. Underneath, incomplete intended for White. And it's fourth down. A.J. Dillon so far, only 17 yards on nine carries. And a big weapon for B.C. has been the play-action pass. When you're behind the chains, it's hard to sell play-action. 100%. And give, give credit here to the Boilermakers. They, they've really come out here today. And Boston College has an experienced offensive line, an awesome running back, a developing quarterback. And they have taken them out of the ball game with the way they play. Rondell Moore will get another chance here. This one bounces, so maybe he won't get a chance. It's picked up by BC at the 36-yard line, a 31-yard punt. No return. The momentum with the Boilers. They lead by six. Throughout the years, many famous people have taken a turn at hitting the world's largest drum, Harry Truman, former president, Purdue alumnus, and first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, Drew Brees, and of course, Steve Harvey. Can't forget Steve Harvey. Now bang the drum. If you're the Boilers, they've got a 13-7 lead. The defense has been terrific so far. And 
David Blau on the offense with another chance. They'll begin at their own 36. Blau off play action, steps up. Under pressure. And out of the pocket, able to throw it away. The safety, Will Harris, getting to Blau, second and 10. Yeah, he was out of the pocket, but that was an excellent play for Blau. You're, you're able to avoid the pressure. And he could have taken this sack, but he kept this play alive with his feet. So they go with the play action fake there, seeing Zach Allen right to his face. Just buying time. That's a great job from Blau. And this offense, first quarter had 78 total yards. Their last play, the touchdown for more 70 yards. Flea Flaker. Purdue going into its bag of tricks. Bryson Hopkins gobbled up for a loss. Flag is down. Well, that's a big part of this Purdue offense. The gadget plays. Eagle block in the back. Offense, number 75. Penalties decline. Third down. Penalty was on Shane Evans. It's declined. Evans came back from offseason shoulder surgery to start last week, and now Purdue was able to move around its offensive line a little bit. Dennis Edwards at right guard. Matt McCann getting the start at right tackle for the second straight week. Third and more manageable. Allen trying to get a hand on Blau, who slides, and he's going to be short of the first down and flag. A flag at the end of the play, and uh, this is going to be against BC. Might get a late hit here on Harris. And as Blau went down, Harris caught in no man's land. Answer the play. Personal foul. Defense. Number eight. 15-yard penalty. Be added on the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Two penalties in a row. You start with the Zach Allen offsides penalty, and you come back. The gentleman who had the pick, Will Harris, hitting the quarterback here. And, you know, that's a tough call to make, in my opinion. I, I think because it's, it's hard to stop. And, you know, those are split-second decisions, but I think the officials got the call right. And if you're Will Harris, he wasn't, he wasn't close to the first down. You'll want that one back. 8.38 to go here in the second quarter. Blau hands off to Markel Jones. He got a yard tackled by Zach Allen. Markel Jones majoring in professional flight technology, studying to become a pilot. <laughs> that is awesome. And uh, that defensive line doing a great job there containing Jones as that was a team tackling effort. A lot of white jerseys around the football when it was handed off to him. More in motion. Blau. Find Sparks. And Jared Sparks took a couple of defenders with him for a few extra yards. It sets up a third and short. And that's really been the difference between both offenses today. Purdue has had more manageable third downs. BC has not. You're right. And, and the way that they've been able to come out here and convert has been very impressive. Now, you know, you've got a third and short situation, which opens up your playbook. You're able to hand the football off if you'd like. Um, get in behind that big offensive line and those tight ends. Jones has some running room. And Markel Jones thunders inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Purdue. Excellent execution by the Boilermakers. And this play is de actually designed to go left. As you see, the tight end pulling on that particular play, exactly what they were looking for. They got in behind him and did a, a fine job of, of picking up the yardage they needed for first down. Wow, to Rondell Moore. Slips away, and Rondell Moore finds pay dirt again. Get used to seeing him find the end zone. Here's the ISO here from Rondell Moore. You see him there, number four. This is what you call a rub route. Extremely hard to get up and to contact him when those wide receivers are crossing at that level of the field. But once again, you saw him on his 70-yard touchdown run previously in the game. Run through contact. This time, he runs through a tackle. Despite his small stature, this young man has heart. 
and strength. J.D. Dellinger hits the PAT after Spencer Evans missed the last extra point. We are watching a star continue to go supernova, and he is only a freshman. Rondell Moore went to Jeff Brom's high school in Louisville, decommitted from Texas, and chose Purdue in his first game. Set the single-game school record for all-purpose yards, and oh, by the way, don't let 5'9", 175 fool you. He's a weight room warrior. Couple of touchdowns by Rondale Moore, the electric freshman. And the Boilermakers with a 20 to seven lead. Purdue came into this game winless. BC 3-0, ranked in the top 25. Miles Homan to kick it off. We have not seen Spencer Evans since he missed that PAT. Walker a little trouble on the handle and takes it out of bounds near the 25. A flag down at the end of the play. This is a Boston College offense that has thrived on big plays this season. Of their 21 offensive touchdowns entering play, 13 were on plays of 20 yards or more. Will go to the air on first down. Brown off the hands of Kobe White, second and 10. Anish, and I thought watching film of this Boilermaker defense, they'd really struggled in the back end. The coverage has been tight. It's been timely. And they've done an excellent job of making sure that they are containing Boston College. They made a couple of changes. Kenneth Major getting the start for the fifth-year senior. Tim Case in a corner today. That pass is tipped and intercepted. Kai Higgins, the big D lineman. That's his second pick of the year. What a play. And Anthony Brown, the second batted down pass of the day. And this one, just perfect timing as Higgins, you mentioned it, in the way there, in the right place at the right time with the interception. Wow, the Boilermakers really pouring it on right now with a short fill inside of the 10, looking to increase their lead. from the six of BC. Markel Jones, little stutter step, trying to cut it back, nowhere to go. Pulled down by Ray Smith, senior from Carlsbad, California, big run stopper, second down and goal. Purdue has two timeouts. If Purdue gets six here, what a turn of events going into halftime. Absolutely, and then you start to get concerned about the fatigue of this Boston College defense. Uh, at this point, Purdue has almost had the ball twice as long as the Eagles. And it's hard to play defense when you're, when you're conditioned great or when you are fresh. It's a whole nother ball game when you've got to play defense and you're fatigued. Jones ran into a roadblock. Third and goal. 25 seconds to go. Purdue still has those two timeouts. Clock continues to run, and now a timeout by Jeff Brown. There is a different vibe around this Purdue football program. We were here a couple of years yep. ago, and Daryl Hazel was on the hot seat, and that tenure clearly just didn't work out. They couldn't get it going. When they build momentum, it was stunted. Even the 0-3 start this year, they're young on defense. They lost nine of their top 12 tacklers from a season ago. Yeah. And I know they went to a bowl game. They finished strong, but you know, rotating out quarterbacks, an 0-3 start, losing all those three games at home. You know, in years past, you would have felt like the sky is falling. It just doesn't feel that way around this program. It, it does not, and I think you're absolutely right, and that optimism starts with Jeff Brom. I, speaking to him yesterday, his candor, his transparency, I mean, he was very blunt and frank about the state of this program, 
uh, the talent level of this program, and also the disappointment they feel in those close losses. And I think when you look at that, if I'm a player and I'm listening to this man speak to me directly and truthfully like that, I have no other reason or thing to do except respect him. And, you know, not to mention the beautiful facilities they have now. I think the players feel more comfortable in this situation, and they're proving that, as you said, with being close in ball games. On third down, Blau floats one for the end zone. Incomplete. Hopkins could not hold on. Nice job there by Todd Jameer Torres to jar that ball loose. That almost was six. Well, this defense and Blau once again showing his athleticism and the ball just slightly thrown behind him. What a last second effort there from Torres to jar that ball loose. Or the Boilermakers would have gone up big into halftime. So now a field goal attempt by Dellinger. Spencer Evans, the starting kicker, missed a PAT. We have not seen him since. Chip shot field goal is good. Purdue with a 16-point lead on a top 25 Boston College team. Time for halftime now with Chris Cotter and the crew. The Purdue Boilermakers are 30 minutes away from their first win against a ranked team in almost seven years. 23 to 7 Purdue on top of Boston College. And Ishraf alongside Ahmad Brooks. Purdue's defense was a no-show the first three weeks. Oh, they showed up today. They have been sensational and suffocating. And it starts with the way that they've attacked one of the best running backs in the nation, A.J. Dillon. Each and every time he's gotten the ball, you see black jerseys surrounding, and they've made tackles. And then you start with Anthony Brown, the way that they've been able to get pressure. Here with a five-man rush, sack. They come back, and then this was probably the biggest play of the second half. They get a tipped interception, which turns into three points, extended their lead. Purdue Boilermakers defense, look at these numbers. These are outstanding. 37 total yards with an offense that was averaging 500 yards a game. Three sacks, five rush yards. I've been in awe what they've been able to accomplish here in the first half. Yeah, so that defense is our hardest working player, and it's brought to you by the Duluth Trading Company. Oh, the Breakfast Club, they've got a lot to cheer about. 23-7, to Purdue looking for its first win of the season. First three games that Purdue lost by a combined eight points. Lost on a last-second field goal the past two weeks. BC came in 3-0. A road win last Thursday against Wake Forest. This Boston College team cracking the top 25 for the first time in a decade. Talk of BC maybe being the second best team in the ACC. They didn't look like it in the first 30 minutes. Rondell Moore from his own goal line. Two touchdowns in the first half, and he's subdued at the 10. Mark Morgan caught up with Steve Adazio a few moments ago. Coach, what concerns you the most right now, your offense or your defense? I mean, on both sides of the ball, we've, we've done some of the dumbest things I've seen us do ever. You know, we're, we've turned the ball over on offense and, 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 and made some poor decisions. And on defense, we've let up some big plays. We gave away a nice interception down to the 10 with an offsides. We just got to go out. And, this, that's uncharacteristic football for us. We got to come back out here in the second half, take care of the ball, make good, make plays, make good decisions, and we'll get ourselves right back in the second. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. On first down, DJ Knox for a gain of three. And now Steven Azio's right. What we saw in the first half, totally uncharacteristic of Boston College football. I hadn't seen it on film all year. And, you know, and Steve Adazio is very forward. <laughs> and I'm sure um, he gave his players an earful at halftime. Rondell Moore in the backfield. And now motions. Blau looking to Moore. He's got him. Moore in space. So slippery and elusive, and he picks up two. Four catches for Rondell Moore. Actually making five catches. He's got 95 yards receiving. He's been sensational. I robbed him of another catch. He's got six. Third down now.
BC rushes three. That's enough to get the pressure. Allen trips up Blau, running for the first down. And this is going to be close, but he appears to have the first down. They got pressure that time with both Allen and Ray, but we've seen Blau extend plays with his feet all day. This was a beauty. Watch his pocket movement here. I mean, this is just outstanding. He feels the pressure on the backside from, the, from Ray, who leads the nation in sacks, the spin move, but then the ability to get to the marker and get the first down. That was outstanding. DJ Knox. Tornadoes upfield for a couple. Knox, 5'7", 210, fifth year senior. Benches more than 400 pounds. Five receiver look. Blau gets rid of it quickly. And there is more once more. A gain of six, third down. Marcus Valdez and Davon Jones come in for Boston College. Here on third down and four. And this is where the Boilermakers have been awesome. Six of ten, 60% on third down and and they've done it in a myriad of ways you saw Blau extend the play with his feet there they've done it across the middle of the field on the outside edge they've done it with the run what will they do this particular time play clock at one Blau looking for Isaac Seiko and the senior from Atlanta and this is gonna be close I think he's got it he does Looked like they were moving the chains. Now they'll say fourth down. And the offense still out on the field. It is a first down. There you go. Fourth straight home game for Purdue to open the season. 0-3 so far. They've been close in every one as Markel Jones gets three. Yeah, one thing I've noticed today from the Boilermakers offense, they've been able to st stay on schedule. They are dominating on first down, whether that's run or pass. They've put themselves in good situations on second down, which has allowed them to chip away the sticks on second down to make, to make it third and short. And that's where they've had success today in converting on third downs. But their first down work today has been special. On second down, Blau passes tipped. Oh, that was dangerous, but it falls harmlessly to the ground. Zach Allen got it in the air, and it's third down. And Zico might have made the play of the game. <laughs> he bats this ball away. Watch Zach Allen here. You see the athleticism, the awareness, all on display. He almost comes up with an interception. That was dangerous, though, by Isaac Zico. You bat that in the air. Who knows who gets it? Blau is hit, throwing downfield wide open. It's the tight end. That's Bryson Hopkins for a gain of 19. Hopkins building off the best game of his career. His third catch of the afternoon. Blau stood tall like a seven feet tall giant. <laughs> the pocket was collapsing at 6'1", 205 from Carrollton, Texas. He took the hit and put the ball on the money. And Blau continues. 18 of 24 on the day, 245 yards, two touchdowns. He's playing like a man. Blau pumps. Going downfield. Caught. Touchdown, Terry Wright. Once again, first down work. Watch the double move here. Great job of selling it by Terry Wright. And Brandon Sebastian bites on the bait. And the Boilermakers make the Eagles play, pay big with another touchdown. 
30 to seven, Purdue. This was outstanding. Blau, after standing tall, now putting it on target. A wonderful route from right. Boilermaker, Roman. For the world's largest drum, it's a six-man operation. You've got the driver on the left, the right position, the brake man, the crew man on the back. <laughs> they act as the drum's engine. I like it. Beaters on each side. And, and listen to the tryout, okay? It's a one-and-a-half-mile run, a 400-meter sprint, a 100-meter sprint, two minutes of sit-ups, two minutes of push-ups. Are, are you kidding me? That's like trying out for the track team. <laughs> <laughs> Great teamwork. Great teamwork. Let's see if BC gets something on special teams from Walker. He's been dangerous in the return game today. 40, and Boston College has yet to crack 50 yards of total offense. Purdue came into the game giving up 475 per game. BC came into the game averaging almost 580 yards of total offense per game. But the Eagles have it back after the turnover. A.J. Dillon on first down. He's looking to get untracked. There's Marcus Bailey. We've called his name a lot. Purdue's best defensive player with the stop. Yeah, he's made some key plays, and especially with considering A.J. Dillon being on the opposite side. And, and that was a nice first down run. Maybe Dillon can get something going here and bail his team out. Dillon bullies his way for a first down close to midfield. Dylan just has not been able to get on track. <laughs> Play action. CJ Lewis into Purdue territory. And to the 44 yard line of the Boilermakers, a gain of six. And that last play, A.J. Dillon leads and had to bring in the backup. Once again, though, good first down yardage for the Eagles offense. Brown steps up. Completes downfield, going right back to Lewis inside the 30. And this is the best we've seen Anthony Brown all afternoon. That was a good ball. He's in good rhythm. Um, stayed tall in the pocket there and Connected there with Lewis. They'll need more of that if they're going to get back in this ball game. Two tight ends into the game. Toss to Dillon. Got a huge block on that left side. Chris Garrison, number 81, created a chasm for A.J. Dillon. Yeah, and then it was followed up by Aaron Montero. Coming in, just watch this left side just cave in. Oh my goodness. That is the type of blocking you see on film previously before this game. Dylan inside the 15. You know, part of the problem offensively for BC, this is the first game this season where AJ Dillon hasn't been AJ Dillon. He's the first domino for that offense. You're right. It allows them to get into their play action game and and then you then you can pick your poison on the outside with one-on-one -on -one matchups. Now play action, end zone, intercepted! Antonio Blackman, the former walk-on, with his second career pick. And that's the third interception Brown has thrown today. Yeah, this one's tough. Uh, this one's, this is a very difficult play because Tommy Sweeney does not fight for this ball here. Third team all ACC last year. Watch him here. Just didn't give great effort there. And now the ball wasn't thrown great, but when your quarterback throws you up a ball in the end zone and you're 6'5", 250 pounds, do not let a smaller guy fight you and win for the ball. Now it was a great play. <laughs> and, and you got to give the Boilermakers credit. They've continued to make plays defensively, but there I'd have to say Sweeney has to fight a lot harder to bail his quarterback out. Instead, it's Purdue ball to 20. Markel Jones stiff arms his way to the 23. 
Now Maryland opened this season with that statement win against Texas. Matt Canada, the interim head coach there. It's two years in a row the Terps beat Texas. Wow. Rolls the pocket. Isaac Zico upended. Anish Roth alongside former Texas Longhorn Ahmad Brooks. Mark Morgan down on the sideline. Tom Herman's going to get it turned around, right? I, I like what Tom's doing here. And, he, you know, and you, you talk about Jeff Braun. It, it, that's another bright coach that, you know, has the right energy. You know, it, it boils down to the players, you know, and, and, and I think once a player feels that they can trust a coach, they're, they're more willing to play harder for him, and that, that product results on the field in terms of wins and effort. And, and that's what you're seeing here today out of the Boilermakers. Hopefully, my horns at some point can do the same thing. It's third down and two. Blau will run. This is going to be close. I think he may have gotten a generous spot. Needed the 30. It'll be the final play of the third quarter. Blau picks up the first down. First and 10, Purdue, the Boilermakers, 15 minutes away from their first win against a ranked foe in almost seven years. 30 to seven, Purdue leading number 23, Boston College, as the fourth quarter begins. First meeting between these two, ACC against Big Ten. The reputations of both conferences have taken a bit of a hit in the early season. The Big Ten had a bad week. Now the ACC outside of Clemson has seen a lot of its teams stub their toe in non-conference. Steve Adazio last week, special teams struggled. Michael Walker has been strong in the kick return game. Can he give BC a boost in the punt return game? Former high school quarterback from Naples, Florida, retreats. Let's this one bounce. And it's down inside the 20. Nice puck by Shopper. 30 to 7, Purdue here. AJ Dillon. He just has not had a ton of running room today. 19 carries now, 59 yards. And Dillon came into this game averaging 144 yards per game. Brown looking for Kobe White, can't bring it in with one hand. It's another third and long situation for Boston College. That's been the story for the offense this afternoon. Yeah, and Anthony Brown does not look like the same player. He's missed a few targets today. This young man is going to be a star, I believe. Uh, but today has been one of those rough days for the sophomore. Had the best game of his career last week. 300 yards, five TDs. As time, there's a flag down. Lorenzo Neal with the pressure, and it's intercepted by Major. Kenneth Major made his first career start today. He's got a pick. Major finally taken down by Aaron Montero, the left tackle. Flagged down back at the nine yard line. Holding, offense, number 77. Penalties decline, ruin of the field. There's an interception, first and 10. Well, Purdue. Anthony Brown came into this game, nine TDs, no picks. He was completing almost 70% of his passes. Four interceptions today, and he's nine for 20 passing. And those four interceptions have come on the last five possessions. Yeah. That's where you feel like you've stubbed your toe. And, and this, well, hopefully, if you're a Boston College fan, you hope this is a growing pain for Anthony Brown. But the Boilermakers have really put on the heat today. Markel Jones into the secondary and a first down at midfield. And Boston College, as their backups in the game, as Purdue still has their starters. That's the white flag from BC. And Purdue already lost three home games. That's big in terms of getting back to the postseason. Nebraska next week. The Huskers are reeling. Even yeah. though that's in Lincoln, you got to think that's a winnable game. Then you have a bye week. You should be able to go beat Illinois. 
Ohio State, Michigan State on the road. That's going to be tough. At Minnesota, at Indiana, even though Indiana's played well, those are winnable games. I think they're going to have to steal one to become bowl eligible. Yeah, and the way they've defended uh, this Boston College rushing attack, which is very similar in scheme to Wisconsin, you know, maybe that's a game where they can come back and establish themselves as dominant run stuffers. Uh, but, you know, listen, I think when you're the Boilermakers and you have a win like this, the confidence you have, and you'll go back and you'll look at those three class losses where you lose by less than eight points, and hopefully, if you're a Boilermakers fan, they're able to get over the hump and, and to become bowl eligible. Yeah, that Eastern Michigan loss may haunt them I would at agree. the end of the season, losing agree. to a team from the MAC. But this was an impressive performance by Purdue today. And we've been honest about it. We didn't see this coming. Blau throws it away, third down. Monday night. A lot of drama surrounding Antonio Brown this week as well. The trade me tweet, missing practice. Rondell Moore bottled up, fourth down. So Purdue will kick it back to BC. About if you're Steve Adazio, how did this take place? Was it maybe a team reading its clippings about being ranked and the comparisons to you know, the Matt Ryan days? Uh, was it maybe overlooking a Purdue team that was 0-3 and really hadn't played very well defensively in its first three games? I think it's a combination of all those things plus the fact that the Boilermakers played their best game of the season so far. They were clicking on all cylinders. I, I, as much as you, you would want to look at Boston College and say they just haven't performed today, the Boilermakers didn't show anything like what they showed today um, here on the football field in front of the home crowd. For Boston College, they've got a chance to get back into the win column next weekend against Temple is E.J. Perry will be the new quarterback for B.C. Then uh, you've got N.C. State on the road. Louisville, which certainly looks vulnerable without Lamar Jackson. Miami's a home game at Virginia Tech. And then Clemson. Boy, that closing slate, starting with Miami, Virginia Tech, Clemson. Uh, to go to Florida State, you'd expect the Seminoles to be better later in the year under Willie Taggart than they are right now. And I'll tell you what, Syracuse... It might surprise a few people this year off to a 3-0 start. They're playing UConn today as Ben Glines rips off a nice run for BC. Yeah, when I look at that schedule, I, mean, I think... Back heavy. It is. So, you know, what you've got to do is be able to work out these kinks now and be able to... You want to be playing the best ball of the season at the end of the year, and you really want to get your guys going. Today, Anthony Brown and A.J. Dillon, along with this offensive line, their three pillars have struggled. And they've got to figure out a way to get them going to where this doesn't happen, at least to where they can stay in ball games. And now, Boston College had been in down in even some of their wins. Th the difference was they found a way to, to regain their confidence. They made adjustments at halftime. Today, that was not the case. Anthony Brown struggled. A.J. Dillon just could not get going. And I think you got to credit Nick Holt, Absolutely. the Purdue defensive coordinator, this Purdue defense. You hold... A.J. Dillon, who Steve Adazio thinks is the best running back in college football, to 59 yards on 19 carries. That's pretty good. Uh, I mean, and they did it with team tackling. Their effort was great. And even when he got on the edges against smaller defenders, they tackled with courage out there as well. All around outstanding performance for the Boilermakers defense. Perry finds Glines. He'll pick up another first down for B.C. E.J. Perry out of, soft, uh, out of Andover, Massachusetts, a sophomore. Computer science major. His dad was his high school coach. Finished his high school career second all time in career pass yards in the state of Massachusetts. And then Boston College's offense, four turnovers on the day, seven penalties, four key dropped passes, four sacks allowed. I mean, it's just been a rough day. Yeah, nobody's good enough to overcome that. Perry is hit. Lewis goes up to make the catch inside the five. 
A gain of 37. That's Boston College's longest play of the afternoon. Let's just watch the replay at the end of the play here. Lewis took a shot. Does an excellent job after Perry throws. Well thrown ball of getting up and going up top. Not sure what happened there, but Lewis is now being helped off of the field after making a wonderful grab. Ahmad, you've been a, a part of games like this. What, what's going through the mind of a player on the BC sideline right now? Can I now? get on the bus? I, I, I cannot get on the bus soon enough. I may not even shower after a game like this because you know this coaching staff is going to attack these players. They are going to get an earful. And you, you're disappointed in yourself if you're a true competitor. But, man, to come out here with all the hype surrounding your ball club and just not do anything, um, that's very disappointing. No signal on the run by Levy. So second and goal. There's A.J. Dillon looking on. One of the top rushers in the country. Perry will try to sneak it in, and he gets six more for B.C., but that's all bookkeeping at this point. All right, so the, the question that we had posed at the start of the broadcast, who's the second best team in the ACC? We had made the case for BC. Clearly, we've got to go back to the drawing board. So who is that team? Is it Miami? Is it Virginia Tech? Is it NC State, Duke? I'm not entirely sure that you can give up on Boston College yet. This is not a conference game. They can, they can still beat Clemson. You know, they can still, they're still in the mix, I should say. But I think when I start to look at it, you know, teams like Duke have emerged. Syracuse. If Syracuse's Eric Dungy can finally peak his senior year, look, quarterback play is the difference for every title team. And so when I start to look at the ACC and the way that this thing is shaking out, um, I think it'll be a team when it's all said and done at the end of the year, that'll team that'll surprise us. Where we'll go, wow, we didn't see that one coming. Is it Boston College? I don't know. But I, I, I'm not willing yet to cancel them out either because of the success that I think they had early on in the year. I think what you said, I don't know. It's Clemson and then Fair enough. a bunch of question marks. You know, might as well put up a, a Riddler image. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was a year where, yeah, Purdue, again, with what they lost on defense and losing a lot of senior experience from a season ago, you wondered if it might be a step backward before they can again take a couple of steps forward. But with what we've seen today, you get the sense Purdue might sneak up and maybe surprise a few people that we didn't think would happen as this season prolongs. They got better defensively today. I do, and their confidence. Onside kick by Carlson. Purdue will recover it, and they'll just take a kneel down and give these fans a home victory. And what a great feeling, especially for that young man right there, David Blau, awarded and earned a starting job a week ago. And, and this team, with the confidence, I, I, I personally believe that from top to bottom, the Big Ten is the toughest conference. And I know the SEC elitists will say, are you crazy? But I think when you start to look at from top to bottom, I, I think for the last two years they've been in the conversation. But this year, um, with the way that the SEC is certainly top heavy, um, you could look to teams like Boilermakers and strengthening in this conference for sure. For the first time since October of 2011, Purdue has beaten a ranked team. Jeff Brom and the Boilermakers get their first win of 2018, and they take down a top 25 Boston College team. For Mark Morgan and Ahmad Brooks, I'm in a Shroff, Purdue. Knocks off BC. Now to Chris Cotter in the studio.